Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The wife decided to satisfy her desires with another, but she repaid her perfection with another. Today's story has a similar plot. Enjoy it! Mom and dad were Christians, and they prayed for Julie, telling God that they would not allow their daughter to go down this dark path and would save her soul. She lost her baby in the seventh week of pregnancy, which caused a lot of stress, sadness, and relief in the family. Julie became depressed due to her parents' disappointment. Tommy left her when he found out she was pregnant and had lost the baby. She spent a week in the hospital when they heard her say she didn't want to live. After a few months, Julie recovered with the help and support of her family. She was experiencing great grief and hoped that she could change her life, receive forgiveness from her family, and become a better person. She had a kind soul, but she got involved with a bad guy and almost ruined her life. Julia was happy to get a second chance. The first year was difficult for Julie as she realized that her actions had caused the pregnancy and blamed herself for the loss of her baby. She prayed for forgiveness and promised herself that she would never let anything like that happen again. She was offered counseling, and Julie was finally able to forgive herself after months of counseling. She also became active in the church and met some people who showed her love and how to care for each other. Throughout her time at university, she was focused on her studies and helping others, and she was highly respected on campus. Her beautiful face, long blonde hair, blue eyes, large breasts, and long legs also attracted a lot of attention from men. She could choose anyone she wanted, however, she had no interest and had not dated anyone since then. Overcoming her childish ways and focusing on her studies was her main goal. She met Austin at a church meeting and immediately felt attracted to him. Austin was handsome and well over 190 centimeters tall, which complemented Julie's 180 centimeters. They made a cute couple and started dating. Austin was a couple of years older than Julie, and like Julie, he was not dating anyone due to his involvement with the church and his MBA. They got married and found well-paying jobs in Orlando, Florida. Julie worked as a sales representative for a software company, and Austin became an IT manager at Disney World. Everything went well, and their first year of marriage was magical. They were deeply in love with each other. Austin was generous with his lovemaking, and Julie loved being made love to. The only night Julie had had before Austin was rough intim with Tommy. Austin was not the type of man to disrespect a woman and put Julie on a pedestal, giving her all his love. Julie's past was a dark family secret, and her father made her promise never to discuss it or bring up that part of her life again. They loved their lives and enjoyed a wonderful marriage. Children Patricia and Lacey came into their lives over the next few years, and of course, they were raised according to their religious backgrounds to be respectful, caring, and to follow the teachings of the church. Austin became Disney's head of IT, leading a large team and becoming an integral part of Disney's infrastructure. He was highly respected at work in a church, where he devoted some of his free time to supporting the community. When the children became teenagers, Julie returned to work selling cybersecurity software and loved getting out of the house. She loved raising her children but needed some newness in her life and found it by returning to the world of sales. Julie maintained her looks and was still a nicely woman at 37 years old. She kept herself in shape by working out every morning after the kids left for school and looked as good as she did in college. Austin continued to love his wife, and their lovemaking never slowed down. After so many years, it had become a routine, but they both enjoyed their intimacy in bed. Julie sometimes fantasized about the wild intimate she remembered while Austin made love to her, but she never acted on those dark desires. Julie's company had a large client in Jacksonville whom she had to visit twice a month, and these were the only times in their entire marriage that they did not sleep together. Twice a month, Julie had to spend the night in Jacksonville and entertain her biggest client. It was hard for Austin every time she had to leave. He couldn't sleep while she was gone and thought about her constantly. Even 19 years later, Austin was head over heels in love with Julie, and she remained the light of his life. He idolized her and hated being separated from her, even for one night. Julie and her boss, Ryan, reviewed orders and discussed projects and new opportunities with their clients before meetings. Ryan accompanied Julie to meetings due to the size of the account, making sure the client knew how important they were to their partnership. 
Ryan was about 10 years older than Julie and highly educated. She found him interesting and learned a lot from being around him. Ryan was from New York, and his manner gave him confidence and made people like him. He was a handsome man with a sharp tongue and was popular with the ladies. At first, Julie teased him for being a ladies' man, but after a while, she began to enjoy being with him. They became more than just business partners and became good friends. They made it a habit to go to the hotel bar at the end of the day to have a drink and watch the results of the meetings. After several trips, they got to know each other better and seemed more like a couple than business partners. There was more touching, intimacy, and friendly teasing than usual. Julie didn't think of it as anything other than a standard business platitude, but sometimes she did think about Ryan while making love to Austin. At first, she was bothered by the feeling of guilt, but after a while, she allowed herself to fantasize without feeling guilty, knowing that she only loved Austin and fantasizing was not cheating. A few months later, after a late meeting, they lingered a little longer in the hotel lobby when the music started playing. After a few drinks, Ryan said, Oh, I like this song. Do you want to dance? She innocently agreed, and they danced together with two other couples on the small dance floor. They ended up dancing to two more songs, and that's when Ryan touched Julie for the first time. Julie was shocked but did not move away. Deep down, she enjoyed the attention and straightforwardness. She also liked the way it felt and did not react or comment on it. That evening, nothing else happened, and life went on. Over the next few trips, dancing became a regular part of their after-hours get-togethers. Ryan grew bolder. One day, Ryan was more aggressive with Julie. Ryan's aggressive nature triggered memories of Julie's past, and she began to yearn for that aggressiveness. Austin had always been kind and gentle to her, but that was something she realized she was missing. In her mind, she just wanted to enjoy something from her past and let Ryan have his way. After many nights like this, they were now kissing and touching each other. Julie thought it was all just part of business and had nothing to do with her marriage or her love for Austin. She just wanted to enjoy the attention and get back into bed with Austin. In fact, her lovemaking with Austin became more intense, which raised several questions from Austin about her newfound intimacy. After her last trip, Julie came home and dragged Austin straight into bed for a very long lovemaking session. She was more aggressive than usual. Austin questioned her about her night drive, but she simply explained that it was due to hormones and that she missed his loving touch. Having no reason not to trust his wife, Austin loved the attention and enjoyed the new enthusiastic Julie. Of course, things never stay the same, and one night after a few drinks, Ryan invited Julie to his room after some hot dancing. Julie felt good after all the drinks and followed him to his room. Julie gave up her marriage, husband, and children and just wanted to experience the raw intimacy she had dreamed of. She wanted to do it just once so she could get it out of her head and no one would have to know. There was no way she was going to ruin her marriage or her love for Austin, but in her mind, it was just an intim. Her boss Ryan was no bigger or more handsome than Austin, but it wasn't a matter of looks or love. This was something she had never done with Austin, and now she just wanted it rough. Ryan couldn't believe that this quiet, conservative girl was capable of doing something that his own wife would never agree to. Julie then returned to her room. She slept for a couple of hours and woke up realizing what she had done. As her head cleared from the alcohol, she realized that she had had a night with another man other than her husband. Guilt overwhelmed her and caused her great pain and suffering. Crying did not seem to relieve her of the terrible feelings but only increased her feelings of guilt. She called Ryan and told him that she would not be accompanying him to his meeting that morning and stayed in the hotel room until late that evening. This gave her time to get some more sleep and get her emotions under control. Ryan understood and went ahead with the meeting without her. Julie convinced herself that last night was an accident due to alcohol and it was just an intimate. It was a one-time thing that would never happen again, something she needed from her past, and now that it was over, she could carry on as before. There was no reason to tell Austin about this since she'd created a new place in her head to separate the adultery she had just committed from her dark past. Yes, she enjoyed the experience, but she knew it would never happen again. Ryan picked her up at the hotel after the meeting and they drove back to the office in Orlando. She was quiet on the way home and Ryan knew better than to bring it up. They didn't discuss last night and tried to act as if it didn't happen. 
Julie went home and was greeted with lots of hugs and kisses by Austin and the kids. Yes, she was only gone for one night, but the love of her family was something she always looked forward to upon her return. The girls prepare a bath for mom, and Austin prepare a home-cooked welcome dinner for her. They gave her this treatment every time she returned from her trip. They made her feel loved and wanted, something she knew right now she didn't deserve. She cried in the bath with mixed feelings. To be honest, she enjoyed night with Ryan and wanted more. Julie reasoned that she could never have an intim like that with Austin, who only enjoyed making tender love she adored. But if Austin knew what she wanted, she was afraid that he would think she was a woman of easy virtue. Maybe she could get Austin to be a little more aggressive in bed. She'd try. After drying off and putting on jeans and a sweatshirt, she went downstairs to enjoy a wonderful dinner, her favorite dish, with a glass of wine. The girls realized that something was bothering their mother and asked what was the matter. Julie, trying not to cry, simply said that maybe she had a cold and just needed to rest. After dinner, she went to bed while Austin cleaned up the kitchen. When he approached, Julia pretended to be asleep. She decided that this was the best way to avoid any questions or conversations that she might not be able to handle. Over the next week, Julie really tried to talk and get Austin to be more assertive in bed but Austin insisted on treating her like a rose, being gentle, caring, and loving. She had just realized that this kind of intim would not be a part of her life with Austin and was enjoying wonderful warm and intimate with her loving husband. She loved the way he treated and idolized her and realized that he was special and one of a kind. She would treat him specially and make sure he knew how much she loved him. On the other hand, Ryan was just a one-night stand to scratch an itch that Austin would never find or understand. The next two trips after the guilt attack were more professional and nothing happened, but deep down Julie wanted a repeat and needed night. She knew it was wrong and remained in control until the third trip when they had another late meeting. They drank more, danced, and without saying a word, ended up repeating what had happened before. Apparently, Ryan and Julie had the same need for a night. Ryan's wife was not intimacy exciting, and combined with Austin's lack of aggression, they both knew this was exactly what they needed. Once they were done for the night, they never discussed it. The next day they continued to act as if what they did had never happened, which was a control mechanism to hide their guilt. Somehow, they were both able to separate their feelings and simply treat these events as intim. Neither Ryan nor Julie wanted a relationship because they were both deeply in love with their spouses, but they both needed more intimate than they could get at home. They convinced themselves that they were helping each other as if these events were therapeutic for their marriage. Julie's 20th wedding anniversary was approaching in a few months and Austin wanted to make the day special. He was disappointed when he learned that the date coincided with one of her trips out of town. Unfortunately, she couldn't change the date since it was their annual meeting with the CEO and it had been scheduled long before. She said they could celebrate the next evening. Austin was disappointed but agreed that it was the only logical thing to do. However, Austin, being the sentimental fool that he is, was not about to miss their 20th anniversary on the right day. Austin and the girls worked together to plan a surprise party at her hotel and invited both their moms and dads as well as a few close friends. Austin rented a private dining room for 8 p.m. He planned to pick up his parents and go to Jacksonville, which was only two hours away. The girls took care of all the balloons and other things needed to decorate the room with the help of other guests. They would get there a couple of hours early, decorate the room, and make it special for their mom. Austin called her boss and arranged for him to bring Julie to the private room at 8 p.m. sharp. Ryan knew all about this event and, of course, was invited to celebrate their anniversary with his family. His job was to keep it a secret and ensure Julie arrived at the gym on time. A plan was made, and Ryan was excited to help celebrate their 20th anniversary with family. Julie had no idea, no one was giving anything away and she was going to be completely surprised. Over the past few months, their bi-monthly encounters had become even more passionate. They looked forward to these special evenings every month. No one suspected, and they managed to keep this part of their lives separate from their marriages. Oddly enough, both of their marriages seemed to strengthen, being happier and more fulfilled, they were able to give more love to their spouses and families. According to them, dating every two months was beneficial in creating a stronger bond in their marriage. 
Austin and the girls were excited about the surprise party, and the moms and dads were overjoyed with the close-knit family. They were the most loving family they knew, giving all the credit to Austin, who was a wonderful father and loving husband. Everyone knew how madly in love he was with Julie and the girls, and everyone loved being around them. The girls couldn't contain their excitement when they arrived at the hotel. They were so happy and thrilled that they could surprise their mom that evening, carrying boxes of decorations, balloons, and gifts. They exited the car at the valet. Austin had to calm the girls down and take them to the food service area to introduce them to Marcia, the hotel coordinator. Marcia greeted them and appreciated the girls' enthusiasm. This was the most enjoyable part of her job. She explained to everyone how everything would work and how she would help make their evening super special. The girls were so happy and excited that they made Austin smile and feel loved. Meanwhile, Julie was getting dressed for the evening. When Ryan told her about the special dinner that evening, Julie was under the impression that Ryan was planning something special for her. She went and bought a special dress to impress her lover and excite him for a night of passion. Julie bought a red silk dress with a very low neckline and a cinched waist. Moving on to an extremely short dress, her breasts would be exposed because she couldn't wear a bra with that dress. She wanted to wear heels with this outfit, but it was too short so she ended up wearing a new pair of seamless pantyhose without panties, giving anyone who looked a clear view of her shaved legs. Before the trip, she had told Austin that when she went to get her legs waxed, the esthetician talked her into shaving them, saying her husband would like it. Of course, Austin had no idea, but he liked it. He didn't understand that it wasn't done for him, he thought it was out of character for Julia, but he really liked how it looked and felt. He'd never had any reason not to believe her story. Ryan had told her to be ready by 6 p.m. and to meet him at the bar because he wanted to be alone with her tonight. He knew that once her husband arrived, Julie wouldn't be with him for another two weeks, and he needed some alone time with her tonight. When he saw Julie enter the bar, his mouth dropped open. He was looking at the prettiest girl he thought he had ever seen. Her makeup was dramatic with false eyelashes, dark eye makeup, and super nicely red lips. He instantly became aroused and noticed that other men were watching the girl in the hot red dress walking towards Ryan. He gave her a long kiss and led her to his seat at the bar, away from the crowd. It was a combination of a large bar and a lounge area. Ryan found a secluded spot in the back of the lounge where they could be alone and out of sight. This gave him privacy and some time alone with Julia. He knew he had just under two hours alone with her and he was going to enjoy every moment possible. It was 6.30, and Marcia was about to give the family access to a private room to decorate for their anniversary party. She told everyone to follow her and even helped carry some gifts. Everyone was excited and happy to be part of this surprise. The girls couldn't wait to see their mom's face when they surprised her. Several friends arrived, and Marcia led them all through the dining room to a private room. As they entered the dining room, a waitress dropped an entire tray of food and drinks, forcing them to take a detour. Marcia acted quickly and instructed the family to follow her, finding another way to take them to a private room. They followed Marcia out of the restaurant to the other side where the bar and lounge were located. The girls, walking ahead with their balloons in their hands, happily followed Marcia. Meanwhile, Julie and Ryan were kissing, hidden behind a wall but still in a public place. When Marcia stumbled upon the loving couple, she paused, trying to shield them from the young girls and family. Marcia was determined to make the family wait and stop the couple from kissing long enough for them to move past. Unfortunately for Julie, Marcia wasn't successful or fast enough. Austin was just a few steps behind Marcia and the girls, and when Marcia stopped, everyone was standing next to the kissing and exposed couple. Little Patricia had already filmed them on her mobile phone, capturing this strange scene. Everyone was confused when Marcia tapped the couple on the shoulder and asked them to stop for a few seconds so they could pass. When they broke the kiss, Austin immediately recognized Julie, and so did their daughters. That's when things got interesting. The girls began to cry, and Jennifer screamed in surprise. When Julie's gaze fell on Austin, both sets of parents stood there with their mouths wide open in shock. Their friends looked on in disbelief. Austin screamed, completely shocked and surprised, Julie, what are you doing? Suddenly, complete silence fell over the bar. No one moved, and everyone froze in place. Julie realized that her skirt had ridden up, exposing her. 
She quickly moved away from Ryan and tried to cover herself, but as she did, one of her breasts poked out from under her dress, causing gasps from her mom and the girls. Austin was about to say something, but he felt dizzy and a pain in his chest. He felt as if an elephant was sitting on his chest. He dropped his gifts and clutched his heart, and then everything went dark. When Austin finally opened his eyes, he had no idea where he was or what had happened. Alarms went off on the monitors he was hooked up to, and several nurses rushed to his bed to make sure he was okay and not going into cardiac arrest. He tried to speak, but nothing came out. The reason he couldn't speak was because of the tube inserted after his surgery. After two days, he finally woke up and was ready to rejoin the world. They removed the tube and told him not to speak for now. He drank some water and tried to come to his senses. After some time, he realized he was in the ICU and had undergone open-heart surgery after suffering a major heart attack. He had been coded twice, which meant he was out of action twice and was out for almost a minute each time. They thought they had lost him on the operating table, but he had come back to life and was now recovering from his ordeal. When the nurse saw that he was becoming restless, she gave him a sedative, and he fell into a relaxed but semi-conscious state. He would remain in this state for the next 24 hours. Meanwhile, after they took Austin to the hospital, the scene continued in the bar. Julie's mom walked up to her daughter and slapped her hard in the face. Ryan tried to protect her, but Julie's dad grabbed him by the throat and told him to get out before he decided to take action himself. They saw Ryan run out of the bar, leaving Julie defenseless against her family. The scene was horrifying as Julie cried, and Patricia and Lacey were crying and screaming at their mom. Both sets of parents stared at Julie, who sat on the floor with her head in her hands, crying. She was completely humiliated, scared, and worried about Austin. Her mom looked at her with disgust and said sharply, Get off your fifth place and take off that dress right now. Put on something respectable and go to your husband while he's still your husband. We are disgusted by this, and we are ashamed to call you our daughter. Now, get up. Julie stood up and ran out of the bar to her room. After the ambulance took Austin to the hospital, Julie's mom and dad went up to her room and lectured her. Her father, Bill, was furious with his daughter for allowing herself to fall back into her old ways. Her mom tried to calm him down, but he wouldn't let up. This man, your husband, gave you all his love and treated you like a queen. He spent weeks planning to surprise you and celebrate your 20th wedding anniversary tonight with your friends and family. He gave you the most thoughtful gift of love, and you spent it almost without clothes with another man in a public bar. I can't believe you're my daughter, and I've had enough, he said angrily as he left her hotel room. Julie's mom sat in silence while Julie sobbed, feeling as low as a person could feel. The wise mother finally spoke after a while, you need to be with your husband in the hospital and pray that everything is okay with him. You also need to pray that he will forgive you for your betrayal and actions. He's a good man but I'm not sure how I'll get through this, Julie. An hour later, dressed in jeans and a sweatshirt, Julie sat in the waiting room with her head in her hands, still sobbing, feeling completely alone. The family and even her daughters did not want to be with her, as they felt she was the cause of their beloved dad's heart attack. Everyone was angry, hurt, and upset while they waited for updates. Doctors came out with news several times. One day, they said his heart had stopped, and they thought they had lost him, but they managed to revive him. Hearing how close he was to death, Julia began to sob even harder. Still alone, she prayed and begged God to bring him back to her, promising to make everything right again. She knew she loved him, and that Austin loved her, and believed everything would be okay. After ten hours of waiting, the doctor came out and said they were able to fix his heart and stabilize his condition. They said the next 24 to 48 hours were critical, and if he survived beyond that, his chances of recovery were high. Tears and prayers continued to flow from Julie's eyes, the girls, and both sets of parents. It was a quiet and somber scene. The nurse told them that Austin would sleep for at least the next 12 hours, possibly several days, and advised them to return to the hotel and get some rest. She promised to notify them of any changes. Julia did not sleep and continued to pray for forgiveness, feeling responsible for Austin's heart attack. She believed her life would be over if he died, cursing her own desires and actions. Julie now understood how many people had suffered because of her selfishness and couldn't live with the guilt. 
she had no one to turn to and was forced to suffer in her own grief. Julie's tears and prayers continued nonstop as they sat in the waiting area with the girls and their parents. The next evening, Patricia and Lacey, his two daughters, hugged his neck, crying in relief that he was not dead. They held onto their daddy until the nurse gently pulled them away, which made him smile and feel better. Austin was incredibly weak but happy to see his family. Then he saw his mom and dad and asked them what happened, admitting he didn't remember anything after they arrived at the hotel. Everything that happened after that was a blur in his mind. His mom took his hand and said, We were getting ready to prepare the room for the anniversary party, and you had a heart attack, honey. It was tough for a while, but you got through it, and the doctor says you'll be fine. You just need some rest and no stress for a few weeks. Where am I? Austin asked. You're at Mercy Hospital, which has the best cardiology department in the area. They want to keep you here for a few more days until they're sure you're ready to come home. Where is Julie? Is she here? Austin was looking for his most valuable asset, his wife. She was here, but we sent her home to rest. We'll pick it up later, but for now, you need to rest. The truth was that the family and the doctor, knowing what had caused the heart attack, thought it best for Julie not to visit until his condition was more stable. Bringing back memories of that evening could potentially cause setbacks, and no one wanted to risk it. Okay, but I really want to see her. Please bring her as soon as possible. I miss her so much, Austin's mother cried as she and Bill walked outside, feeling sorry for their son. They couldn't bring themselves to tell him what had caused his heart attack at that moment, especially given his fragile condition. They were grateful that he didn't remember what had happened. The doctor explained that shock may erase memories temporarily to prevent pain, but at some point, the memories will likely return. Julie had trouble sleeping while Austin was in the hospital, missing him dearly. Every night, she continued to pray for forgiveness, crying in their bed. She believed that his heart attack was her fault, and if he died, her life would be over. She saw no reason to live without him. She cursed her desires and hated herself for her actions. Julie now understood the suffering caused by her selfishness and couldn't bear the guilt. With no one to turn to, she had to endure her grief alone. Two weeks later, Austin was recovering at home. Julie announced that she had quit her job to stay home and care for her husband, which made Austin, her mom, and dad extremely happy. During this time, Julie met with Austin's parents and apologized for her actions. She didn't offer any explanations but expressed regret and promised to make amends to Austin. They agreed to keep the incident private until Austin fully recovered, at which point she would explain herself and seek his forgiveness. They were a close-knit family and valued honesty and openness. Patricia and Lacey, aged 16 and 14 respectively, still treated their mother coldly. Julia patiently understood their pain and didn't push them to forgive her. Instead, she continued to be the loving mother she had always been. The children couldn't reconcile their loving and gentle mother with someone who would betray their father so easily. They loved their father dearly and were angry at Julie for hurting him. Austin was surprised to hear that Julie had quit her job, knowing how much she loved it. He brought it up in bed that night, saying, Julie, why did you quit your job? We both know how much you like it. Won't you miss it? Hearing these words sent a chill down her spine. She did love her job, and she would miss it dearly. Though hurt, she didn't show it and simply replied, We don't need the extra money, and I'd rather be at home with you and the girls. I don't want to be away from you anymore. He smiled, took her hand, and thanked her, but she sat with a deep sense of guilt. She wondered how he would react when he remembered or found out what she had done. She loved him deeply and needed to ensure he knew how much she cared. When the children fell asleep, she lay down next to Austin, ran her fingers through his hair, and confessed her love. She expressed her appreciation for his love and how special he made her feel. Julia assured him that she would never leave him and that they would always be together. Austin smiled and kissed his wife lovingly. He suggested that his near-death experience helped her realize the importance of their marriage, accepting her love and care. Julie meant everything to him, and he would do anything for her, a fact known to everyone, including Julie. Ten days later, Austin was back on his feet and returned to work part-time. The following week, after receiving a clean bill of health from the doctors, 
he felt great and more alive than ever. Austin felt as though he had been given a second chance at life, a wake-up call to appreciate and love everyone in his life even more. He called everyone who attended the party to thank them for their support during his ordeal and apologized for disrupting the celebration. Everyone was relieved and happy to hear he was feeling better and would be okay. During his last call to their friends Susan and Mark, he began to remember something Mark had mentioned during the conversation. Mark said he was glad Austin was getting better and then added, if it had been my wife with another man, I'm sure I would have had a heart attack too. These words stuck in Austin's memory and bothered him all day. That night, when he was alone in bed with Julia, he told her about what Mark had said. If it had been his wife with another man, he would have had a heart attack too. Julie, do you know what he meant by that? I'm starting to remember something. Maybe I should call him and ask him what he meant. What do you think, baby? This memory loss is driving me crazy, and I just want to fill in the blanks. No, you don't need to call him, Julia replied. He probably meant that you saw me with Ryan at the bar and he gave me a congratulatory kiss for the great job we did. Austin looked blank as he struggled to piece everything together. It was no use, and he lay with Julia until he fell asleep. They slept soundly in each other's arms, until suddenly his eyes opened, and everything became crystal clear in his mind. He completely remembered that evening and everything that happened. It was 3 a.m. when he sat up in bed with a look of panic on his face. Julia was already awake, looking at her husband worriedly, thinking he was having another seizure. I remember now. I remember everything, he said, not addressing anyone in particular, but Julia heard every word. Tears welled up in her eyes as he continued. We followed this lady into a separate room and saw a couple kissing, and the woman was almost without anything. We stopped, and everyone stared at this couple. It's coming back to me. I remember thinking something, but I can't recall. Wait, I heard Patricia say something. She screamed, Mom. Mother. She screamed, Mommy, why? He rubbed his head, and now Julia was crying, knowing any second he would remember what he saw. Holy. Julie, were you the one with that man? Now I remember. Am I imagining this? Could you explain this to me, please? My head is about to explode from all the images I see. I remember your face. You look shocked. You. You didn't know we'd be there. Julie, were you with another man? Is this what happened before I passed out? Julia sobbed again, trying to take Austin's hand, but he pushed her away. He was confused, frustrated, angry, and needed to know what happened. But unfortunately, he winced at the new pain in his chest. When Julie saw him clutching his chest, she called 911 for help. The girls woke up when they heard the paramedics placing their father on a stretcher and looked at their mother angrily. Lacey looked at her mom, tears streaming down her face, and screamed, It's all your fault. You're trying to kill him. I hate you. Guilt washed over Julie as she heard Austin reminisce about what happened that evening and heard her sweet little girl blame her for her father's heart attack. Hearing her daughter say she hated her made Julie realize how much pain her actions had caused. She held Austin's hand in the ambulance and prayed for her husband's life. The paramedic gave Austin a sedative, and he was in stable condition when they arrived at the hospital. Austin was admitted to the cardiac unit and examined. Meanwhile, Austin's mom and dad, along with Patricia and Lacey, arrived at the hospital before they left for it. Julie called his mom and dad and informed them of the situation. They offered to pick up the girls and take them to the hospital to be with their father, just in case the worst happened to him. After about two hours of worry, one of the doctors came out and told the family he was doing well, he had an anxiety attack, but his heart was fine. The doctor asked Julia if there was anything that could have caused the stress that led to the attack, but she couldn't admit how he remembered her womanizing. Austin's mom and dad were nice to Julie for the girl's sake but clearly didn't want to be with her because of the anger they felt over her betraying their son. Like everyone else, they blamed her for Austin's health problems. The doctors wanted to keep him for a couple of days for observation. They gave him a sedative so he wouldn't worry. He was not allowed visitors until the next day, and Julie never left the waiting room, falling asleep whenever possible. Mom and Dad took the girls home and looked after them while Austin remained in the hospital. 
Julia woke up when one of the nurses came out and announced that Austin wanted to see his wife. Frightened and worried, she followed the nurse back to his bed. When she saw that Austin was connected to all the machines, she ran up to him and hugged him tightly. Are you okay, baby? We were so scared, she said. They pumped me up, but I had time to remember everything, and I couldn't sleep. Did you have an affair with Ryan? She cried and hugged him, not wanting to look at the only man she had ever loved. She was ashamed, felt guilty, and didn't know what to do. At that moment, Julie, do you love him? Are you leaving us for him? Please tell me. I need to know, he asked with tears in his eyes. She felt the pain she caused him and wanted to die right then and there. No, no, no. I love you, and I won't leave you. I'm so sorry for what I did, and I know you'll never forgive me, but I'm begging you not to ruin our marriage. I made a mistake, and I need your love for me, please, Austin pleaded. How long have you been dating this man? Julia wasn't sure how many more tears her body could take, but she sobbed uncontrollably in shame and guilt, tears streaming down her face. In a quiet voice, she struggled to confess to the man she supposedly loved. For the last year, she said. Austin cried for the first time, deeply affected by these words even under the influence of sedatives. This pain was different from the heart attack in recovery. It was a pain of betrayal, anger, resentment, fear of loss, and the collapse of his world. He felt completely helpless and lost, as if he had fallen into a black hole. Julia had never seen him cry before but now he was crying openly and looked so sad. It was then that she realized how much she had hurt him, and seeing him like this was the most painful feeling she could ever imagine. She had betrayed the man who loved her unconditionally for a few nights of intim. This affair turned her into a treacherous, deceitful, and unfaithful wife. She wondered how anyone could take her back. When the nurses saw Austin in this condition, they asked Julie to go outside until his condition stabilized. They increased his dose, and he fell asleep again. Julie was in shock and had no idea what to do. Now, everyone hated her for her actions, even her children hated her, and she hated herself. When the doctor met her outside the room, he suggested that her visits were upsetting Austin and that she should not visit him for a couple of days. In fact, he signed an order to keep her out of the ICU until further notice. The doctor knew there were issues that were causing him stress and needed to look out for the well-being of his patients. To make matters worse, the next day Julie's mom came to her house to talk to her daughter, and things didn't go well. Her mom was close to the family and knew how devoted Austin was to them and how much he adored his wife. Her mom was more upset than Julie had ever seen her before. Julie, your dad, and I can't believe you did this to Austin and your family. We are so disappointed in your actions and how you betrayed your family. We prayed for your family every night, but I'm not sure it can be fixed. So tell me, was all that cheating in an intim with your boss worth it? Are you proud of yourself? Do you know how many people you've hurt and let down? Honestly, I don't know who you are. It's like you are living two different lives. Julie burst into tears and told her mom that it was a mistake and that she wished she could take it all back but didn't know what to do. Her mom let her cry as she sat trying to process her little girl and how much pain her selfish actions had caused. Her mother felt somewhat guilty because she wondered what she had done wrong in raising her daughter. They sat in silence for a long time until the girls returned home from school. Her mom met them home from school while Julie showered and tried to get ready for the girls. Patricia and Lacey still hadn't spoken to their mother, but their grandmother told the girls that their mom needed their support and that we all make mistakes. She explained how their father needed them to be strong and help their mom, who was suffering along with Austin. They promised to treat her better but never forgave her for hurting their father. Julie went downstairs. The girls hugged her and asked if they could see their dad. Julie explained that the doctor didn't want her to visit him until he was discharged. Julie's mom said she would take the girls upstairs to see their dad. Mom took the girls away, and Julie sat on the sofa, continuing to cry. The pain never went away. She never thought of Ryan as anything more than a way to distract herself and get the extra night she needed. She never felt anything for him, nothing like the love and respect she felt for Austin. Even as she thought about those words, she realized how contradictory they were. Who could possibly understand how she could have an affair and still love and respect her husband? 
she finally realized what she had done, how selfish she was, how she lied, kept silent about their affair, and deceived everyone into believing that she was an ideal wife. The tears wouldn't stop, and she wanted it all to end. And even thought about hurting herself, but she immediately realized that this would cause everyone even more pain. All she could do was cry and pray for a miracle. They kept Austin under observation for the next five days and sent him home on Saturday morning. The girls sat with him all day, and Julie tried her best to keep everyone happy. Austin was cold to Julia and said very little. The love Austin showered on Julie was gone, and she wanted it back so badly it hurt. Austin felt much better and stronger after a week of rest. After talking with his family, he realized he had to deal with his feelings and move forward. The conversation with Julia was important, and he needed to remain calm. The next day, the grandparents took the girls shopping and gave Austin and Julie some time to finally talk about the incident. Left alone, they both sat in the living room, Julie on the couch and Austin opposite her in his favorite chair. They sat in silence for a long time until Julie spoke. Austin, please let me explain as best I can. If things were to change, I know exactly how I would feel. And with that in mind, please listen, she said, while Austin remained silent and cold. The life I lead with you and the girls is the most important thing to me. Nothing is more important. I can't live without the love I felt from you, and I beg you not to throw me out or divorce me, she told her story. I never knew what love was until I met you. What you don't know is that he got me pregnant, and he left me as quickly as he could. I was alone, scared, and thought my life was over. I lost my child, and my life changed. I spent my entire college life studying and not dating anyone after it happened. That was until I met you and learned what true love is. You treated me so well, and I loved being with you. And that never changed. The way you make love to me is so special, and I have never experienced anything like it before. You make me feel like a queen, and I love the way you treat me and make me feel so loved. And I hate myself for what I'm about to say next. She looked up at Austin and saw tears in his eyes as she spoke. Julia knew she had to tell him everything, so she continued. Over the next hour, she explained how it all started innocently and turned into something that happened to her on every trip. This will be hard to hear and understand, but he treated me the same way Tommy did, and it brought back some intimate feelings that I hadn't had in years. It was as if I had gone back in time with Tommy and been treated like a prostitute and just craved rough night. I have never slept with him, cuddled with him, or kissed him the way I do with you. Our night is pure lovemaking, and you would never treat me like that, but apparently, I was missing that in my life. This was something I didn't realize I missed until it happened. In my mind, I thought that if I did this to him, no one would ever know, and my painful desires would be satisfied, and our love would never suffer. When you saw me that evening, I immediately realized what I had done and how crazy I was for doing this to us. I know you're hurting right now, you're angry and you hate me, and I understand. I'm not sure how I can fix this, but I'm willing to do whatever you want to save us. I would die without your love, Austin, holding back tears, this large man began to speak in a trembling voice. He began to cry again as he began. Julie, when I saw you kissing Ryan that night, my world disappeared. When I saw you in that dress in front of the girls, I felt like I had fallen into a deep hole. You literally broke my heart that night, and it will take a long time for it to heal. I gave you every ounce of my love, and you gave it away like a pair of two-dollar shoes. He took a deep breath and drank some more water as Julia sobbed from the pain she knew she caused. Julie, I don't believe in divorce, but I'm not sure how we can go back to what we had. We'll need counseling in a long period of time before I can even think about being around him again. You say you will do anything I ask to keep us together. There are some things I need you to do that you may not like, but those things are non-negotiable. I would advise you to quit your job, but I was pleasantly surprised that you have already done so. This shows me that you were serious about correcting your mistakes, she felt hopeful and said, of course, there was no way I could be part of the company that caused this, and I quit the next day. This is a good start. What I need you to do next will be much more difficult. On Monday, I want you to meet with Tim, the owner of your company, and confess to him what you did and the reason you quit, she listened and said, okay, I'll do it. What else can I do? On Monday afternoon, 
I want you to visit Ryan's wife and tell her what you did in every detail, without holding anything back. Then, I want you to ask her for forgiveness. You need to cleanse your soul, and she must know about your betrayal and the betrayal of your lover. One more thing, effective immediately, there will be no, and I mean zero, contact with your lover, the man who is ruining our marriage. This means no emails, text messages, phone calls, or secret meetings. If I find out that you are communicating with him, everything is over between us. Do you understand? And will you do it? Yes, I understand. Let me be clear, Julie, after all this, I'm not sure things will be the same. I no longer feel the love that I once felt for you. Actually, I'm not sure how I feel right now. The little things I did for you, the way we touched each other and shared those special glances, I think are lost too. The thought of lying in the same bed with you right now makes me sick, and I'm not sure how long it will last. The humiliation you subjected me and our family to is beyond all comprehension. I will forgive your mistake, but I will never forget the lies, deception, and betrayal. This will live with me forever. Thank you for this, Julie. As I said, I will not be filing for divorce for several reasons. The first is the vows I made on our wedding day, for better or worse, and abandoning all the others that you apparently forgot. Our children need the love of both parents, and I don't believe in divorce. However, you have a difficult path ahead of you with an angry family. You have lost my trust in you and greatly diminished my love. If you can't handle it, then I suggest you speak up now, and I will set you free. I do not want it. However, I can understand if what I need is too big. You may even be thinking about moving in with your boyfriend, and I don't want to stand in your way. So, make your decision, stay and fight for your marriage or give up and take the easy way out. Still crying, she again felt the pain she had caused. She cursed those primal intimate desires with which she was cursed. She said it would be difficult to talk to his wife, but she would do it if he wanted it. Julia was in hell and would have done anything to get out of there. It was time for repentance, and she would spend a lot of time correcting her mistakes. I will do everything you ask and more. My love for you has never changed. I have problems with night, and I know I need help. Hearing that your love for me has changed is something I simply cannot bear. I need my husband to love me the same way he loved me before, and I will do anything to get that back. Please stop calling him my boyfriend, he was nothing to me, and I would do anything to prove it. Julia was head over heels in love with Austin and never thought that his love was in jeopardy, even despite this intimate affair with Ryan. Her night addiction drove her to do things she never consciously wanted to do, but once it started, she couldn't stop. It was an addiction she suppressed for years, but once it started, there was no stopping it. She always believed that she could get her fix without anyone needing to know, and it worked for them all this time. We will begin counseling immediately, and I expect complete honesty and no holding back. If you lie or try to hide anything, we're screwed. You took away the most valuable thing we had in common, our trust, and completely erased it from our relationship. It will be a long time before I trust and love you again. Not being able to love you the way I loved will be painful for me because that is what I lived for, and you took that away too. I think you should sleep in the guest bedroom because whenever I think about hugging you, all I see is how happy you were when you kissed and let your lover hug you in front of you. I can't get the sight of your kiss and body without clothes out of my head. My heart hurts every time I think about it. Julia was shocked when he took her to the guest room and realized how serious he was. She moved her clothes and personal items into the guest suite which consisted of a large open-plan room with a king-size bed, a large walk-in closet, a bathtub, and a private door to the patio and pool area. It was a comfortable room, but she felt like an outcast at the other end of the house, away from her husband and children. Every night, she cried herself to sleep because of everything she had done, and now she was banished from her own marital bed. Thinking about what Austin said, she realized that she wanted to stay and make him love her again, and would do anything, no matter how hard it was. On Sunday morning, Austin got up early and cooked breakfast. When everything was ready, he called the girls down to eat. Before Patricia sat down, he told her to go tell her mother that breakfast was ready. Patricia made a face, and Dad told them to be respectful and nice to Mom because she's going through a hard time and needs love. Julia was surprised that they had invited her to breakfast and quickly followed Patricia to the table. 
Austin was nice, fed his three girls breakfast, and tried to have a normal Sunday morning. Patricia and Lacey barely spoke, but Julie continued to ask them questions. The girls answered her in short remarks, obviously still angry with their mother. When the girls finished, they were excused, and Julie and Austin had coffee. It was nice of you to cook breakfast and call me with the girls. I wasn't sure if you'd still talk to me, she said, placing her hand on his shoulder, trying to show him some love. Julie, I'm going to treat you with respect and show the girls that we're still a loving family. But you can see that you have a lot of work to do to win back the love of your daughters. You really screwed up, Julie. I hope it was worth it. No, it was a mistake, and I hate myself for what I did. All I can do is show it to you, okay? I'll clean up the kitchen. Why don't you go up and talk to the girls? I think they need to hear from you how you feel. Let's go to the cinema with them this afternoon. I'll give you the opportunity to discuss this with them. Oh, thank you, Austin, she said, leaning in to kiss him. She felt a pain in her heart as he jumped back, as if she had been infected with some kind of disease. Don't, Julie. Until I can get the image of you and Ryan out of my head, the thought of any intimacy is repulsive. I'm sure it hurts, but I can't get this vision out of my head. It keeps me up at night, makes me sick, and makes me hate myself and you for what you did to this family. I hope we can overcome this. He had never spoken like that before, and Julie's tears started flowing again. She stood with her head down, looking at the floor. She knew it was her fault and understood it. Then she turned and went upstairs to see the girls. No matter how angry they were at their mom, when she walked into their rooms and saw mom's tears and how sad she was, they walked up to her and hugged her tightly. The three girls sat on the floor and all cried, hugging each other tightly for a long time. Nothing was said as everyone let their anger and pain spill out of their eyes. Girls, mom made a big mistake and hurt your dad, and I hope that you can forgive me. I never wanted anyone to get hurt, and I know it's all my fault. Mommy, why did you want to be with this man? Don't you love daddy anymore? Julia's tears welled up again. No, I... I only love your father. It was a mistake, honey. I didn't do any of this on purpose. It just happened. I can't explain why I allowed this to happen, but I never stopped loving your father. I love him more than anything in the world and I hope he can forgive me and still love me. The girls felt sorry for their sobbing mother, and they continued to hug her. Daddy loves you, Mommy. I know he loves you. He's angry and hurt, but I think we can help you. But you have to promise that you'll never hurt him again. It really hurt us to see what you did to him, and we cry every night when we saw you kissing this man, almost without anything. We got angry at you. We're still angry, but we love you. Please don't do this again, Mommy, Lacey said, sobbing, as Julie's heart broke. She still couldn't believe how badly she had screwed up and hurt so many people. They spent the day as a family, went to the movies, and had dinner at the girls' favorite restaurant. When Julie went to the ladies' room, the girls told their dad about their mom. Dad, Mom is really sorry for what she did. We're still mad at her, but we don't want you to divorce her. We love her and want her to get better. Do you still love her? He felt his heart flutter when he had to discuss this with his daughters and tried to be the kind father that he was. Of course, I love your mother, and no one is going to get a divorce. It's just that we, as a family, have a lot of work to do to get back to where we were, and I'm going to need your help. I'm so sorry this happened and that you got caught up in this, but we will get through this if we support each other. The girls were happy to hear this, stood up, and hugged their dad. When Julie returned from the ladies' room, she loved her family and had to find a way to get back to the way things were before. Over breakfast, Julie said, I have an appointment with Tim Jackson at 10 a.m. to tell him what happened. I'll text you when I'm on my way home. Please do, and remember what I said about Ryan. No communication, no contact with him, and I'm done. Also, I want you to turn on the recorder on your phone when you talk to Tim. I want to hear exactly what you tell him. Is this really necessary? You don't trust me, she asked, but immediately realized her mistake as soon as she said it. Are you really asking me if I trust you? No, I don't trust you at all anymore. You lied to me for over a year and gave the only thing I cared about to someone else. No, 
I won't be able to trust you for a long time. Record the conversation and text me when you're on your way home. Julia nodded with terrifying understanding. Later that morning, she left for the office. On the way, she replayed in her head the conversation she was going to have with Tim and wanted to make sure she told him everything. Julia was led into Tim's office and sat down opposite him at the table. He greeted her and smiled warmly. We were sad to see you leave us, Julie. Everything okay? Can we convince you to come back? Tim asked. Trying to hold back her tears, she began her rehearsed conversation. Thanks, Tim, but I can't. You see, this is the reason I'm here. Over the past year, some things have happened that are preventing me from working for you. Tim looked confused and waited for her to continue. You see, Ryan and I had an affair during every visit to Orlando, twice a month. My husband caught us red-handed, and in an attempt to save my marriage, I can no longer work here. I made a stupid mistake with Ryan, and I wish it had never happened, but it did, and I am responsible for it. I felt I owed you an explanation for my dismissal. You've been so good to me here, and I didn't want to leave you without explaining why. Ryan had an affair with you, and now your marriage is in jeopardy? Do I have that right? Tim asked. Yes, I'm so sorry that I let this happen, Julie. Thank you for telling me this. We have always respected you here, and we will miss you. Thank you for coming, and please let me know if you need anything. I'm sure I'll see you at church, Tim replied. She got into her car and felt a huge weight lift off her shoulders. It was awkward, but she felt good about telling him why she was quitting. A message was sent to Austin, and she was home within 20 minutes. She was home by noon and handed Austin her phone. I told him everything, and he thanked me for coming to see him. Austin listened to the recording and didn't say a word. Today at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you have another meeting with Mrs. Tyson. I called her and made an appointment at her house, and she is waiting for you. She doesn't know why you're coming. I told her it was important, and she became very curious. Once again, I want your recorder on when you meet her today. I expect you to tell her about this whole matter, exactly how it started, how it developed, how often, how many times, and how it ended. She deserves to know the details about her cheating husband, a man who harassed a married woman. I want her to hear everything. You have an hour before you have to leave. I prepared lunch for you in the kitchen. Walking up to her door and realizing what she had to do was one of the hardest things she had ever had to do. Mrs. Tyson was a beautiful woman wearing a beautiful dress and heels. She invited Julie into her house. Ellie Tyson poured herself some coffee and sat down with Julie in her living room. She couldn't wait to hear what Julie had to say and waited for her to start. Julie looked at her phone to make sure it was recording and placed it on the table in front of her. Ellie, please let me apologize for my bad actions for the past year. I've had an intimate encounters with Ryan every time we went to Orlando. She stopped and gave Ellie time to process what she had just said. Tears streamed down Ellie's face as she dropped her head into her open palms. Julie was now used to the pain she caused others, but she still felt their hurt. She wondered if this guilt and pain would ever end. I'm sorry that this happened. It all started with an innocent dance, and, well, we had a night. We never had any feelings for each other. I never loved him or wanted him in any way. We never made love, we just had an intim. I'm not sure you can understand this, but please believe me. I don't feel anything for him. I also quit my job and no longer work for him. I will never talk to him or communicate in any way. Ellie didn't say a word because she was in shock and had no idea that her husband was capable of such a thing. By the end of the meeting, they were both crying and Julie realized again how many people her actions had hurt. She told Ellie to call her if she needed more information, but she would not be involved in any conversations with Ryan. She cried all the way home, realizing that she had ruined another life. That evening, Ryan came home with even more bad news for Ellie and told her that he had lost his job due to cutbacks. Ryan was devastated when Ellie said she found out about his affair and was tired of his lies and deceit. That evening marked the end of their love and marriage. Ryan was angry about how things turned out and couldn't believe Julie told his wife about the affair. Julie returned home around 4 p.m. and handed Austin her phone, knowing he wanted to hear her confession. After she had to listen to it again, 
she felt exhausted, tense, and with tears in her eyes. She went to her new bedroom to shower and lie down. Now she understood how difficult it would be. Austin listened to the tape again and felt bad that she had done this, but it had to be done for the greater good. He needed to get his anger and resentment under control and hoped that counseling would help. Janice Darling, a middle-aged counselor recommended by their church, was easy to talk to and had a lot of experience in the field. She asked them both what they wanted to get out of these meetings. Austin, what do you want to get from our consultations? She asked. I want to find the love that I once felt for my wife. It used to be the most important thing I had, and I lived to make her happy and feel loved. I have so many questions about where it all went wrong and what I did to cause this affair. I want to trust my wife again. I just don't know how to get back to that, he said quietly. I want to look at my wife and not see her in his arms, kissing her and looking so happy. Julia cried when she heard him say that his love for her had changed, because her love and need for him was now stronger than ever. Julie, what would you like to get from these meetings? Janice asked. Well, the main thing I want is for Austin to love me like he used to, forgive what I did, and return everything to normal. I know I have some issues that I need to open up and understand. I want Austin to know that I love him more than anything in this world, and I've never loved or wanted anyone else, she said, still crying. Janice gave them time to process what she had said before speaking herself. I think this is a great place to start, and we can work towards getting to where you want to be. But I implore you to be honest and open. If you withhold anything, the process will take longer and may undo any progress we have made. This is a judgment-free zone, and we need to be open and honest with each other. During one of the sessions, one of the questions caused Austin to pay close attention to her answer. Janice asked Julie what she was thinking about when she was intimate with Ryan. Her answer was revealing. Well, first of all, we've never been close, and this has never happened before. All I ever felt or wanted from him was intim, rough intim. The worse he treated me, the more I wanted. The more it hurt, the more pain I wanted to feel. I never thought of him as anything other than satisfying a need deep within me. The more he humiliated me, the more I wanted to be humiliated. It was like an addiction, and I had no control over the outcome. All I know is that I wanted more. He wasn't the best man, like I said. Just being humiliated and treated this way made me want and react. I don't know why this happened, and I need to understand why and how I can stop these desires, she said from a dark corner of her soul. I have love and respect for Austin. I could never accept such treatment from him. I love him, and he loves me. He would never do that to me. I crave his touch and lovemaking. I need this so much it hurts. I miss him so much that it's all I think about, and I know it's my fault. I'm so sad, and I want my husband to love me again. After several sessions, Janice discovered that Julie had a hidden and intimate addiction and a desire to be abused, which was the exact opposite of the lovemaking that Austin provided. It was related to her first intimate encounters in high school and had never gone away, only hidden and suppressed. The guilt of losing her child, being abandoned by her boyfriend, and her parents' anger all contributed to these issues. After several therapy sessions, Austin realized that Julie had intimacy problems from her past and an addiction to rough night and humiliation. Janice explained. She told Austin how addictions can take over and control emotions, causing people to do things they never intended to do. She told Austin that Julie loved him completely, blamed herself for everything, and only wanted to win his love back. Janice didn't use addiction to take the blame away from her, but she explained that Austin had done nothing wrong. In fact, he was the reason Julie had done so well during their years together. The truth was that Austin was her rock and she needed him now more than ever. Janice suggested that Julie become part of a support group for night addicts and continue to meet with her weekly. She believed she could help Julie and save their marriage if Austin was willing to help his wife. She explained to Austin that Julie had indeed cheated on him, broken her vows, and betrayed him, and that he had every right to feel hurt and angry. But he needed to be understanding because of her addiction and her past. Janice also suggested that Austin meet with her weekly to help him get the visual images of Julie and her lover out of his head and learn to better manage his hurt and anger. At one of their private meetings, Janice said, From all our meetings, I know that Julie loves you and needs you now more than ever. 
I'm afraid that without your strength, Julie will be lost and could return to a destructive life. Her future is in your hands, Austin, and you have to ask yourself if you can forgive her, love her, and help her get back to where she was before she fell. The easiest way is to leave, but I know that you are a stronger person than that. Austin's world was turned upside down on his birthday. In one evening, his happy life turned into a painful nightmare. Now, he had to decide their future. It was unfair, but thanks to prayer and the help of the church, he gained faith. The question that still haunted him every day was what to do about Ryan. His faith told him to forgive and forget, but his boiling blood wanted to do something dark and vengeful to ease his pain. Many days had passed since he learned about Julia's affair. They tried to live a normal life and forget about her betrayal for the sake of their children. Julie was focused on getting Austin to forgive her and trust her again, but it was going to be a long process. She gave her love completely to Austin and spent every minute making sure he came first, which should have happened from the start. Bill, Julie's father, wasn't quite the religious guy he portrayed to the family, and he didn't like it at all. His little girl had been seduced by a predator, and he wasn't going to let it go that way. This guy Ryan almost ruined her marriage and hurt his grandchildren, which he couldn't stand Bill was still angry at his daughter and spent a lot of time with Austin, trying to convince him to show her some mercy and forgive her. He promised that the family would bond and work with Julie to keep her on the right path. She wasn't going to get off easy, her life would be hell, and the freedom and trust she enjoyed would be gone for a very long time. Julia willingly agreed to anything to stay together as a family. After everything was settled, Bill focused on making sure Ryan understood the damage he had caused. In a biblical sense, Bill thought, revenge is mine, and simply said, an eye for an eye. Bill decided that this guy should never break up another marriage again. Even though Ryan's marriage and financial situation were destroyed, he still needed to pay for the pain he caused so many people. After many hours of deliberation, Bill finalized his plan. It was supposed to be a dark and physical revenge that would be interesting to read about in the morning papers. Bill purchased the items he needed from places most people wouldn't visit and stored them in a safe place until the scheduled date. At home, Julie cooked another amazing dinner, cleaned the house, and got a cold beer for Austin when he got home. She treated him like the man of the house every day and showered him with the love he once gave her. Ironically, everything changed completely for Julie. Instead of being the one showered with love, Austin was now on the receiving end. With her father's help, Austin was gentle with Julie and treated her kindly despite the anger he still felt underneath the surface. Things did get better for Austin day by day, but their lovemaking never resumed. They tried to get close several times, but every time they tried, all the images of Julie in the arms of another man returned to Austin's mind. Julia cried, realizing that this was because of her deception. Austin kept his frustration and anger under control, but the thought of his wife being with another man to satisfy her needs took a huge toll on his self-esteem. Sadness and disappointment continued to haunt them during those first few months. Fortunately, the children were happy, and their family life seemed to be better than before. Julie made up for the love that Austin had lost, and the children did not suffer because they became the center of their marriage, as they should have been from the beginning. After learning more about what Julie was missing in their nightlife, Austin made several decisions. He remembered what Julie had described during their consultations and did some research. He read a lot of articles and even watched several adult films, which he had never thought of watching before, to understand how he could satisfy his wife's desires. Having suppressed but not extinguished his anger, he decided to give Julie a night to remember and, at the same time, try to calm his anger a little. He asked the parents to pick up the children for a few days and planned to spend an unforgettable weekend with Julie. Her confessions during their therapy sessions flashed through his mind, and his rage grew stronger. The news that he wasn't enough for her and that she needed more cut him deeply in several ways. His ego was crushed, his heart was broken, and his brain couldn't assess the damage. Watching the videos, reading the rough intimate stories, and realizing what they were doing took his anger and hatred to the next level. Something clicked, and Austin was going to give her exactly what she wanted, hard and painful. Three months later, after some meticulous planning, Austin had everything ready. All items were safely hidden, a video camera was installed, a box of toys stood next to the bed, and he had two and a half days to take out his anger on his unfaithful wife. 
He wasn't sure how he would feel afterwards, but now he knew what he needed to do. After the kids left for the weekend, Austin returned home to find Julie sitting on the couch, wondering what Austin had planned for the weekend. She hoped they could finally be reunited. When he hugged her and kissed her tenderly, she visibly smiled for the first time since she could remember. Are you ready for a fun weekend, Julie? Oh God, yes. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Okay, meet me in our bed in 10 minutes. Get comfortable and get ready to have some fun, he said as he headed towards the master bathroom. After a long, hot shower, he sat down next to Julie on the bed. Her eyes widened in shock when she saw him holding a blindfold, something she would never have expected from Austin. Well, my loving wife, we have more than two days alone and we're going to make up for lost time. I have some special surprises for you, and you're going to have a lot of fun, Austin said with a big smile, happy to finally be with her again. Once the blindfold was in place, he laid her down on the bed and gently lifted her arms above her head. She giggled as he tied each wrist to the ropes he had prepared before the shower. She stopped giggling and waited anxiously for what would happen next. He did what she talked about in their consultations, he fulfilled her needs, but in a way that was very rough, completely unlike his usual self. Filled with rage and anger, the compassion and love he felt for her were nowhere to be seen. He left her tied up without the blindfold and gave her an angry look as he walked to the bathroom. Austin took a beer out of the fridge, turned on the ball game, and relaxed for an hour while Julie lay there without clothes, feeling completely humiliated and used. She didn't know how much time had passed and drifted in and out of consciousness until she heard the sound of water in the shower. Julie hoped that Austin would stop this and let her go free, but he had other ideas. Hey honey, did you have a good nap? I checked on you twice and it seemed like you were sleeping. I'm glad you got some rest because it's time for another fun session, he said cheerfully, repeating everything again. Thanks for showing me this side of you, baby, he said after eight hours of this treatment. He finished with her for the night and left her alone in bed. He ordered pizza and relaxed while Julie just lay there, not wanting to move. After watching the next match, Austin felt better than he had in a long time. Once his anger and desire for revenge had passed, he began to realize what he had done. He returned upstairs to check on Julie, she was sleeping. He untied her, covered her, kissed her tenderly, and let her fall asleep. The next day, she saw Austin again, but her loving husband was anything but loving, and she knew Austin was taking out his anger on her for her betrayal. Oh God, I've never seen him like this. At first, I liked it, but when I saw his eyes looking at me like that, I didn't recognize him. I was hoping for some of his tender love, but it was just revenge. I kind of liked it, but I felt his pain and anger when he treated me like that. I asked for it and was going to just accept everything he did to me, but the humiliation was too strong. Hearing him talk to me in that tone hurts so much, but I know I deserve it. I'm so sorry that I caused all of this. I turned him into this evil, vicious man, and it's all my fault, she said, tears and sobs filling her voice. Will it ever end? The next day, after a morning session of rough intimate, he woke up and saw his cute wife lying next to him. He hoped that all the anger was gone now, but the image of her and Ryan popped into his head again. He took his frustrations out on Julie one last time. You will never be alone with another man. We will constantly watch you. You cannot be trusted. No dinners with men, no late nights, no bachelorette parties, no after-work drinks, nothing like this. You will be a mother to our children, a loving wife to me. Understood, he said sternly. She nodded again. If we go to an event and someone asks you to dance, your answer is no. You won't dance, you won't sit and talk to another man. If I'm not next to you, you'll kill sweet old Austin. If you don't like my rules, you can go live with your buddy. I won't give a damn. But if you stay, it will be on my terms. And if you do anything that even remotely makes me suspect you of cheating, if I see you dancing with another man or flirting when, for some reason, you're alone, it's over. No more talking, no more forgiveness, no more anything. From this point forward, there is a zero tolerance policy. Understood? Cheat on me again and I will destroy you. I will take your children from you and destroy you. No more Mr. Nice Guy. You ruined everything, and I hope all the intim, 
cheating, and lying to your family was worth it, he said, tears streaming down her face. All she could do was accept his anger and pain. The hurt he once felt was now transferred to Julia, who finally understood how much anger, rage, and hurt she had caused. This was the most difficult moment of her life, and she wished there was some way to go back to the past. Austin felt an amazing change happen to him. His anger and fury disappeared, and all that remained was the realization of how he had treated his wife. He felt terrible for using her and humiliating her, but he realized that the pain was gone and he was ready to move forward. All these emotions washed over him at once. As he rolled off, Julie lay down next to her and started sobbing. Still crying, Julia pulled his head to her chest and hugged him. Say it, baby. I love you. I know you needed it and that's okay. We will be fine and I promise that I will be your ideal wife. I will do whatever you want and I will win back your trust, she said. They hugged each other and cried for the next hour and eventually kissed. After all the pain and humiliation, they were both exhausted and extremely aroused. Julie lay in bed, almost in a daze after Austin's performance. Austin, regretting what he had done, carefully lifted her from the bed and placed her in the warm, aromatic bath he had prepared. While she recovered, he washed her body, washed her hair, and gently returned to her the love that she had been lacking. Intim revenge had managed to drive out the anger and rage from Austin's psyche. Some of his compassion and love returned as he cared for his grief-stricken wife. He dried her and carried her to the bed, then squeezed her tightly in his arms, holding her close, kissing her. There was no verbal communication, just their bodies pressed against each other, telling the whole story. His anger and hatred disappeared, now they had been replaced by a clean, new beginning. She held him tightly, finally able to feel the love that she had been missing. The next morning, Bill and his wife were watching the news in bed when a special report came on about the local hospital. The headline was about an intimate assault that had occurred in their quiet town the night before. The victim was identified as Ryan Tyson, ex-husband and Cybersoft employee. He was alive but in serious condition. The night before, Ryan, drunk, was on his way to his car parked behind the club and woke up in the hospital. Ryan never found out what happened until he woke up from surgery, stripped of his manhood. The last thing he remembered was leaving the club that night. Bill called Austin and told him to turn on the news. Lying in bed together, Julie and Austin watched in shock as they learned of the horror that had happened in their small town. When Austin saw that Ryan was the victim, he felt like a ton of weight had been lifted off his shoulders. He felt like Ryan's pain was retribution for all the pain he had caused so many people. Julie was shocked and just hugged Austin, who was incredibly relieved for the first time since all this started. Bill and Austin felt their revenge was complete. When a new employee revealed that the only clue they had was a note attached to Ryan that said, don't prey on married women, police questioned Austin along with six other men about the incident. Clearly, Ryan left behind a trail of angry husbands with a revenge motive that night. Ryan was with his family and another couple at a baseball game and had a rock-solid alibi. No one was ever arrested for the crime, but everyone now knew that Ryan was rendered harmless, a predator who no longer posed a threat to society. Bill was never a suspect, and he never told anyone about that night, including Austin. This was his secret. After Ryan recovered and overcame his depression, he left the state and was never heard from again. He would never be a problem for a married woman again, and he learned his lesson the hard way. That weekend Austin spent with Julie, coupled with Ryan's misfortune, seemed to allow Austin to heal and move on to the next chapter of his life. Things would never be the same again, but they were in the process of building a new and happy life and never looked back. As promised, Julie was never alone again. She was always with Austin, the kids, or any family members, and there was absolutely no chance of her making another mistake. Their nightlife now included the lovemaking that Julie had dreamed of, as well as several kinky intimate nights that helped both of them through the healing process. After five years, Austin's trust and love truly returned, and their life together was wonderful, different than before all this happened, but no less good and exciting in a new way. However, Austin continued to monitor her email, text messages, and GPS tracker, but she was completely devoted to Austin and his family. He remembered someone once saying, once a cheater, always a cheater. What do you think of our story today? In my opinion, 
the wife is completely wrong in this story, because if she has some desires that cannot fulfill her husband, why she is together with him in principle? What's your opinion? Write in the comments. See you in the comments.